Hello YouTube, it's Bethany from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you the top 10 essential supplies that I feel I could not do without when it comes to restoring, refinishing, upcycling, everything that falls under the do-it-yourself umbrella when it comes to rescuing old and vintage furniture. So I'm gonna share with you those items that I feel like, man, you absolutely have to have these items when you start. If you're if you're just starting to dabble into refinishing furniture and you're like, I don't even know what to get, I don't know what to buy, I don't know what I should be investing in and what I shouldn't be. So I've been doing this for almost 10 years. I started this business right after, shortly after my daughter was born and she just turned 10. So what's that insurance company? Um, Farmers Insurance. I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. So trust me on this. I'm going to give you some good advice here. So let's, let's get into the other area of my workshop where my supplies are and let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm showing my age. Okay, guys, we are on the other side of my workshop where I've got one, two, three, four, four projects going on. So, top ten essential supplies, products that you need when starting to get into refinishing furniture. The first thing, I'm gonna kind of go in order of the products that I use when I start on a new piece of furniture, when I start a project. So the first item is crud cutter. If you have been following me here on YouTube, if you are a subscriber, thank you, first of all. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. You know I'm big on prepping pieces of furniture. So my big thing, um, the first thing that I use is crud cutter. This stuff right here. I'm going to put a link below this video of all the products I'm talking about, all the supplies I'm talking about. So you can go on Amazon and you can get them if you want to. Um, you can also probably find these at Lowe's, Home Depot, some that you can find at Walmart, some you can find at the dollar store. Um, so crud cutter. This stuff is a degreaser. It preps your pieces of furniture. It cleans them. I love it. I've been using it forever. And I love this product to clean a piece of furniture before I even begin working on it. So crud cutter, number one. Okay, my number two supply product that I love. This is like the holy grail of like prepping products. Ah, deserves an entrance like this. Shellac, love my shellac. If you know also with my prepping regimen, but you know what? I gotta do a video on that. I'm gonna do a video on that soon, you guys. I'm gonna do a prepping regimen. We're gonna prep like a boss. Okay, Bethany, don't get sidetracked. Shellac, I use this also, okay, when I prep. So first I'll use cred cutter, then I'll use shellac. Shellac is awesome for blocking wood tannins. If you don't know what wood tannins are, that's okay. We all start somewhere. I didn't know what the heck they were when I first started. Do you know how many times I had a piece that would turn yellow after I applied a top coat and I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on? So I went through this rabbit trail of like, why is this happening? And I found out about wood tannins. They come to the surface after you've painted a piece of furniture. It may look beautiful, but then it may yellow after you apply a water-based top coat. Shellac acts like an awesome barrier and it blocks the wood tannins, it seals them in, and then you won't have that issue. So when in doubt, I always shellac, especially on dark mahogany, dark cherry pieces. Shellac comes in a spray, comes in a can. I've been hearing it's hard to find right now. So if you find some, I would double up on it. It does have a shelf life, okay? So you can't keep it on your shelf for a year to two years. It'll go bad, okay? Make sure you stir it frequently while you're using it. I've got plenty of other tutorials on how to use this stuff. So I'm gonna keep, stay focused. I can go down and start talking about how to use each product. I don't really wanna do that here, but shellac is my number two. Number three, sandpaper. You're gonna need sandpaper. Now, if you're just starting out, I'm not telling you to go out and buy every grit, every type. If you're just starting out, go grab yourself sheets of sandpaper. They're the cheapest. You can cut them in fourths, okay? So when I say a sheet of sandpaper it comes like this, okay? And you can easily cut them up to any size that you want. 
And I would start with like 150, 120 is what you need to um, start out with. Because most people who are starting out refinishing furniture, you're not maybe sanding yet with like an orbital sander. You're maybe doing some hand sanding um, just to scuff up your pieces of furniture. And you're most likely, if you're just starting out, you're just painting a piece, 100% painting it. You're not doing a two-tone look. You're not staining yet. You're not getting into oil-based top coats, things like that. So sandpaper you'll need. So I would start out with just big sheets and then you can cut them up into fourths. That's what I do. I have them all cut up in fourths and I have them in different sections, ranging from coarse grit up to a finer grit. And sandpaper comes in all these different varieties. Um, again, if you're just starting out sandpaper, the higher the number, 500, 600, the finer it is, okay? And then the coarser, the rougher, a sandpaper gets the lower the number is so mid-range is like 120 150 so sandpaper i have so i have a whole drawer just dedicated to sandpaper and then i have like little sections over i need to clean up my area again i've got like major projects going on but i have like four little plastic containers that i got at the dollar store and i have them separated out kind of by grit so i can easily grab them and I reuse them all the time because I'm cheap and that's how I am. Let's get on to the number four. Number four goes with the last one, sandpaper. A felt block. It looks like this. Very simple. A very, very needed piece of gadgetry in my workshop. So I use the felt block. I will take those big sheets of sand, um, sandpaper, cut them into fourths. So this is a fourth of a sheet and I will wrap it around a felt block like so. And I use it to distress edges. I use it to sand in between my top coats. Why you want a felt block is because you want it, you'd rather have your sandpaper wrapped around something flat so you get even pressure against your flat surface than just having it wrapped around your fingers where your fingers are not flat and it just doesn't give a consistent sanding to whatever item you're doing that to. So felt block, awesome, I love it. I use it, yeah, I use it on almost every project. So get yourself one of these. Okay guys, we're up in my kitchen because I'm gonna show you my number five recommended product supply that I would have, Klingon brushes. I did another tutorial a couple years back on a review on Klingon brushes um, they're these awesome brushes. They sit in water. Well, I keep mine sitting in water because I use them a lot. Um, you don't have to, but that's how I store them. So I have, I have eight Klingon brushes and they are more expensive than other paint brushes. Are they worth it? Absolutely. So I am cheap in a lot of areas, but then I also will invest in tools and items that make my job easier. I can work more efficiently and these don't shed and they give me awesome results with painting furniture. So look into Klingon brushes. They have a lot of different sizes. Again, don't go out and buy eight brushes at once. This, this is an accumulation over the years. Um, if you wanna start with something, get maybe their shorter handle, the S30, that's a good one or they have like smaller ones. Just get yourself a standard brush. See if you like it. Um, they have a good shelf life. I've had these for many years. So again, I'm trying to show you what to invest in and what not to, what areas to go cheap and what areas splurge a little. So I would say Klingon brushes, splurge a little. You won't be disappointed. Get yourself one. Okay, we talked about expensive brushes. My number six item is cheap brushes. So two inch chip brushes. I order these in bulk. You're going to use these a lot. I use these to apply shellac. Shellac is something you can't really rinse out. So after I'm done using shellac, I usually pitch a cheap chip brush. I also will use a chip brush um, if I have to like dust a piece. You know, sometimes you get like debris and, you know, sawdust and stuff and to like little crevices. I'll just use one and clean a piece with it. So chip brushes are really useful for those things. I'll also sometimes, I don't really apply stain with these. Mostly shellac, I'm gonna say, is my number one thing that I use a cheap two inch chip brush on. 
You can find these on Amazon. Very cheap if you order them in bulk. Um, I also, two inch foam brushes. I always use these to apply stain and I apply my top coats with a two inch foam brush. So I order these in bulk as well and they come out to be like 20 cents a piece in a box of 24. I'll also include those links. So that's my number six essential thing that I use. Number seven is what's called a foam bonnet. It looks like this. One of my very, very first YouTube videos, I didn't even know how to edit. I didn't know how to add text. I didn't know how to splice videos together. You have to go way back in my YouTube history and you'll see me talk about applying clear wax and how I buff it off. It's one of my most popular videos, believe it or not. Um, and it's all because of this little doohickey. So I found in time with applying clear wax, you really gotta buff it and it really works your arm. And I was like, there's gotta be an easier way. There's gotta be a better way instead of using just a rag. And again, went down a rabbit hole of like, what's a, what are better ways to buff wax? Well, in the automotive industry, they use like these foam bonnets sometimes. And I decided to try one and it works so awesome with buffing wax. So I love these just for buffing wax. So I have, you can see what they start to look like when they start to kind of disintegrate. That one has a lot of clear wax on it. And I have ones that are just dedicated to dark wax. Again, get these on Amazon. And these have been an absolute time saver. I can work faster. My arm doesn't feel like it's about to fall off. And I think they're great. So that's my number seven. Okay, my number eight. Rags. You're gonna need them. If you're gonna be doing this a lot, you're gonna need rags. Rags to wipe up stuff. Rags to buff wax. Rags to sometimes apply stains. Lots of reasons why you use rags. Um, and also, I'm gonna put this along with rags, wet wipes. I use wet wipes a lot um, to wipe away excess glue, to get stuff off my fingers. Um, I use these interchangeably and I'm very cheap with my rags as well. Um, so if I'm done using that, if I'm applying or wiping away, gla oh, glazing, yes, I use rags a lot. When I apply a glaze and then I wipe the glaze off, I don't throw the rag away then. I put it in like a used rag area um, and glaze is usually water-based so it's okay for it to be like stored in this little plastic container and then I just use them. I spill stuff a lot and so I'll reuse them for another purpose. So when you can, keep reusing things till you're absolutely done with them. That's my advice. So this is my number eight, rags and wet wipes. Okay, my number nine essential supply product that I would get is wood filler. You're going to need it when working on old furniture, most definitely. Some pieces of furniture need it more than others. Sometimes you won't need it at all, but it's a good thing to have on hand. And just get a basic color at first and then kind of branch out if you really start getting into restoring furniture and get specific colors. I don't particularly like the wood filler that they um, sell at Lowe's or Home Depot. I find that it dries out too fast. I love a brand called Timbermate, this stuff here. And I get it at a store called Woodcraft. Um, it's, it's a specialty woodworking store. I think you can also order this stuff off of Amazon. And I have like lots of different colors. I have like a white, I have a black. I have a couple different shades of brown um, because I do go through it and I have found that I like to have specific colors, especially black that comes in handy. And this runs about $7.50 per canister. Again, I'm not encouraging everybody to go out and like splurge on all these recommendations. I'm just showing you what I use and what I have found that I use almost on every project that I must have. So wood filler, and then another one I'm gonna kind of put in slash with the wood filler is Bondo. This stuff stinks, okay? <laughs> but it's awesome. So you gotta make sure you have good ventilation with Bondo and you gotta mix it with the like the activator. And what I like about Bondo, it is like, absolutely the best stuff, like super strong stuff. It's not gonna break, it doesn't shrink, it doesn't expand, you can paint it. I use it mostly when I need to make 
Say there's a foot missing or a big chunk missing out of a piece of furniture. I will use Bondo to create sometimes. I'll make the shape, again, a mold out of it. Um, and Bondo is great for that. But make sure you do a lot of research before you start kind of mixing. I did. I made sure I knew what I was doing with Bondo. It's not something to just kind of just go, oh, let me see if I can do it. So definitely research Bondo. But Bondo I would put in the same category as wood putty. That's number nine. Okay, the last supply item product that I think is absolutely essential is wood glue. Okay, so adhesives. So I like tight bond. I use that. I got a couple different kinds of that. Um, I've got, I get these at my woodcraft store. I have one that's pretty near me. Um, I'm sure you could find this on Amazon. I also going to put into this category epoxy. I use a lot of epoxy. Um, with items. I like the Gorilla 5-Minute Epoxy. I use that a lot. So you definitely want to get yourself some wood glue because you will be um, probably repairing drawers. More often than not, I have to re-glue drawers together along the dovetails. Those get loose over time if you're working on old furniture. And I'm the type of person when I put out a product that I'm selling, like furniture, I wanna make sure that everything that I can fix is fixed. So I'm not gonna just paint and stain a piece of furniture and leave the drawers loose coming apart. No, I'm gonna glue them, I'm gonna clamp them, I fix them. So I would invest in some glue. Okay, you guys, that concludes my video on the top 10 essential products, supplies that I use when I refinish and restore furniture. This is Little Bacon. This is our new puppy, our Chihuahua puppy. And while I was making this video, he was upstairs chewing up a pee pad. Yeah, you were. Yeah, you were doing that with your big brother, Biscuit. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I know. So any of you guys, if you have any questions regarding this video, any of the products that I mentioned or how to use them, please leave them um, any questions that you have in the comment section. I'm happy to help you out. And like I said, I will list the products in the, in the supplies underneath the video description with links. Um, if I can find them on Amazon, I'll list them for you. <laughs> oh, little bacon. Is it time to go to bed? Yeah, I think so. All right, you guys, until next time, thank you again for watching. Again, you can find me all over social media. You know it, Facebook business page. Here it is, Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. You can also find me on Instagram, and that's at Bethany.Yusef. Until I see you guys again, toodaloo. Bacon is now gonna say toodaloo. His older brother Biscuit's upstairs. I can't bring them both down. They're too much of a handful, right? Especially you, you're a handful. All right, you guys.